हेलो एंड वेलकम पाइ फ्लूएंट हैज थ्री की पैकेजेस नेमली कोर पैरामेट्रिक एंड विजुअलाइजेशन ईच विथ अ डिस्टिंग पर्पज इन दिस लेसन we will learn in detail about the pi fluent core package using which you can access and perform all the core features of ansys fluent such as meshing solver setup and post process we will also learn in detail how to construct code for different operations using the settings api approach excited let's get started Here is a list of features that are available through the primary package of PyFluent. We can launch an Ansys Fluent solver session in serial or parallel and connect already running sessions. We can create a script using Fluent's meshing capabilities and all of TUI commands and run more than one session asynchronously. We can also retrieve Ansys Fluent field data and solver monitors. Apart from this, we can register function callbacks on fluent solver events basically this library extends the functionality of ansys fluent by adding a python interface without changing the core behavior of ansys fluent let's see this library in action using an example of a static mixer problem navigate to a working folder of your choice and then type in cmd in the address bar to launch command prompt Let's first open a Jupyter notebook session through the command prompt and start a Python 3 session. Give a name of your choice. In this session, let's begin by executing percentage matplotlib inline command. This enables the drawing of matplotlib figures in the Python environment which will be needed in the later part of this session. Now, import the pyfluent core library and name it pyfluent. then launch the ansys fluent session and assign it to a variable with the name solver note that we are using two processes and double precision for this session once the fluent session opens up you can see that the working folder is the same as the one where we opened the jupyter notebook the variable solver can now be used to access all core capabilities of the fluent session let's now see how to read a mesh For that, type in solver, add full stop, and press tab to see a list of options. We know that in Fluent, to read a mesh file, we go to File, select Read, and then choose the option Mesh. Since we are using Settings API approach, we can expect a similar line of command. So, from this list, we can see the file option. Choose that, and then again add a full stop and press Tab. Here we again see a list. where we can see the option read mesh choose this and we need to again press tab after a full stop select argument names option and execute this shows the required arguments to be passed in order to read a mesh file from the list displayed here what we require is the file name argument copy this and paste it inside round brackets and give the name of the mesh file within double quotes Note that the mesh file should be present inside the working folder where we opened the notebook. After executing the code, we can see the fluent console message is also being displayed here, which gives the confirmation that the mesh is ready. Let's check the quality of the mesh we just imported. In Ansys Fluent, to check mesh, we usually use the check option under the mesh tab. The settings API command for this is also similar. type in solver and press tab to see the list here we can see the mesh option choose that and again press tab you can now select the check option from the list add round brackets after that and execute you will see the mesh quality report output from the console of ansys fluent getting displayed here before we go ahead and define models and boundary conditions let's talk about problem description here We have a static mixer geometry that has two inlets where two different fluids or the same fluid at a different physical state can be mixed centrifugally and taken out through one outlet. In our case, we are injecting water at two different temperatures through the inlets. For such a simulation, we need to enable energy and viscous models. 
Type in solver.setup.models.energy and after this add round brackets. Execute this and it shows false which means by default the energy equation is not enabled. So let's enable it by assigning it as true. Note that here we didn't use round brackets because enabled is an attribute of the parent function energy. Round brackets can be used but since only one attribute is being passed, we can avoid it here. Now let's set up the viscous model. To see the defaults, type in solver.setup.models.viscous and execute. By default, k omega model is selected and also we can see that SST is the default k omega model. For our problem, this turbulence model is apt so we don't need to change any of these settings. Next up, we need to create the material for the fluid domain. Type in solver.setup.materials and execute it to see which all materials are defined. By default, air is defined for the fluid zone and aluminum is defined for the solid zone. We need to define water for the fluid zone as we are using water for mixing. For that, list the available materials from the fluent's database. We can see that water liquid is available in the list. Type solver.setup.materials.database and then press tab. We can use the copy by name function. Like we did before, let's check the arguments needed for this. So this function needs type and name as arguments. We know fluid is the type and water liquid is the name. Copy those arguments and paste them inside the round brackets and assign the appropriate fields. After executing this, let's list the materials now defined for the problem. We can see that water liquid has been added to the materials panel. Let's go ahead and assign this material to the fluid zone. Execute solver.setup.cellzoneconditions.fluid to see the current default material assigned to the fluid zone. Currently, air is assigned to the fluid zone. To assign water liquid, copy the fluid zone name here. It is fluid domain and keep it inside square brackets and assign material as water liquid. The square brackets were used here as boundary or zone names and are not internal commands of PyFluent. Note that we didn't use round brackets for material as it is an attribute of fluid. We can now see that water liquid has been assigned for fluid domain. Now go to boundary conditions and check the current status of velocity inlet boundary conditions. By default, a velocity of 0 meters per second and temperature of 300 Kelvin is assigned for both inlets. Let's change this to 1 meters per second for both inlets and for velocity inlet 2, change the temperature to 350 Kelvin. Status now shows that these have changed. Note that round brackets was used to pass the arguments as we were trying to change two attributes of velocity inlet that is Vmag and T. We have completely set up the problem. Next up, let's initialize and run the simulation. Select hybrid initialization to initialize the problem, set the number of iterations to 600 and then start the iteration. The simulation is now complete. Let's go ahead and create contours to visualize the result. First, let's create a velocity contour to visualize the result. The print state function will show the present state of any defined contour. As of now, we haven't defined any, so we get none as output. Let's create a new contour for velocity named velocity contour. Checking the status, we see that a velocity contour has been defined, but no field and surfaces are specified for this. Specify the field as velocity magnitude and surfaces list as pressure outlet by copying and pasting the necessary arguments inside round brackets. Now that the velocity contour is completely defined, let's display this in a fluent session. We can see that image is not scaled properly. We can scale the view so it fits the window using auto scale function. Let's save the picture in our local machine and then try to display this in our notebook session. Type in solver.results.graphics.picture.savePicture to save a picture. While saving, give the name as velocity. Note that 
picture will be saved in as a PNG file in the working directory we mentioned earlier. To display the saved image in the notebook session, we need the matplotlib library. Matplotlib is bundled with the pyfluent core package, so we don't need to import it separately. Import pyplot and image from matplotlib. Type in this code to display the image and use the same name we used to save it as the argument. We can now see the saved image being imported and displayed in the Jupyter Notebook session. The same can be done for the contours of other field variables. Note that the images when imported into the Jupyter Notebook are static images and not interactive like that in a live ANSYS Fluent session. But interactive contour, mesh, and plots can be displayed using the PyFluent visualization package, which will be discussed in detail in another lesson. Now, let's save the case and data using the right option. First, let's check the arguments needed for this. For file type, give case data, and for file name, give static mixer.cas.h5 and execute. Let's go ahead and exit the solver. The code solver.exit will close the fluent session. This notebook session will be saved automatically and you can find it in the working folder. For more information on this package including user guides, API references and other related resources, please refer to the provided link to the documentation. To summarize, in this lesson, we learned more about the PyFluent core package. Through the help of an example problem, we looked at the commands to set up models, materials, boundary conditions, and run the simulation. Lastly, we saw how to produce contours and learned how to display saved images in Jupyter Notebook session. With that, we have come to the end of this lesson.